So you've beat the campaign and you are ready to uh, push on to level 50, get your paragon going, beat the capstone dungeon, enter world tier 3 and have the whole glorious endgame spread out before you. To do that though, you need some serious power and power leveling. But worry not, because I've got just the thing that will let you get ahead of the game. <laughs> I'm sorry. I really am so I'm so sorry. I, I promise you the rest of this is, is worth your time. It's really going to be a very useful video. Hello, fellow dwellers of hell. I hope your stay is proving as pleasant as can be. Today, then, I want to go over the Tree of Whispers. Everything there is to know about it, how it works, a lot of what the game doesn't tell you about it, the best way to farm it, and essentially how to get the maximum bang for your buck, the most gear, XP, and useful things per time spent on this mechanic. So, how does it actually work? Well, as you know, when you complete the campaign, you will get a quest to go talk to the Tree of Whispers. You do so, and it will ask you to essentially go claim your first bounty. But how does the Tree of Whispers? expect you to do that? Well, it is fairly simple, even if the few little pop-up cards don't really tell the whole story. You have a look at your map once this system is in place, and you will see all of these new symbols all around the place, clustered in a few choice zones. These are your activities from the Tree of Whispers to complete, and it will give you Grim Favors. Every ten Grim Favors equals a reward. We'll get to the rewards in in a moment. But the activities themselves then have three categories. The kind of lightest red ones, which are very simple, very easy, fairly quick to do. They're akin to sort of the world events you might have bumped into while leveling. Then you've got the slightly darker red ones. These are a little bit more involved, like kill a hundred enemies across the whole zone in question and deposit their essence, or like a harder elite or mini boss type encounter. And then you've got the deep red red dungeons, which is just literally do the dungeon normally, but this one counts towards Whispers of the Dead. The light red is worth one, the deeper one is three, and the dungeons five. Obviously, as you need to get to ten, you kind of see where this is going. By far and away, the most efficient way to do this is just clear two dungeons. That will take you about five to ten minutes, depending on your current level, power level, build strength, and if you do need help with all of that, we have the best current builds for every every class up on the channel. In any case, the dungeons outstrip the other activities for more than just the fact they give you the most grim favors per time. They also give you, you know, the dungeon rewards. So, uh, the aspect if you've not got it, the renown that comes with clearing it for the first time. They give you the drops from the end boss, which, depending on what world tier you're in, is going to give you legendaries, or sacred legendaries if you're lucky, or maybe even a unique, which is a huge power spike. And as a reward, for completing the dungeon, you get a bonus from it being a Whispers of the Dead one in the form of extra XP, which is heftier than all the other activities. So essentially, the bottom line here, it really is as simple as look at your map and go complete every Whispers dungeon. Every two, head to the tree and get to your reward. Now, a couple things to note. If you are on, say, 9 out of 10, don't worry about wasting a dungeon. Four of the uh, Grim Favors will get added to your next set of 10 once you've got your award, so it carries over. So there's never anything to think about on that regard. And in terms of how often you can do them, how that works, well, every hour and a half or so, the ones not in the PvP zones will reset and essentially move to different places, give you different activities, different dungeons to accomplish. And as far as I can tell from, you know, really powering through these for an hour and a half just to see what would happen if I could complete them all, essentially, it's just that. If you manage to complete them all, 
all an hour and a half, then yeah, you've got to wait till the next lot come up, but you're not going to do that an hour and a half, and past the dungeons, it probably wouldn't be worth your time to do so anyway. You could essentially just farm Whispers all day if you want to. Now, the advantage of doing it, especially when you freshly got to the endgame post-campaign, is that you will be power leveling 250 to uh, the point that you can beat the capstone dungeon by doing the dungeons as part of the whispers. You'll be getting lots of gear in from both the rewards and the drops along the way, and essentially uh, just looping a Tree of Whispers dungeons and getting the rewards and dungeons and getting the rewards is the fastest, most efficient, and easiest way to get your character in a position, both item power wise and level wise, to uh, beat the capstone dungeon dungeon, get into Nightmare, to level up to the point you can do Nightmare Dungeons, and essentially transition into the harder but more rewarding activities as you head into the 50s towards level 60. You also want to be doing the Whispers on Tier 1 if you only have World Tier 1 and 2, or on Tier 3 Nightmare if you have it, so you do have the chance to get those Sacreds and Uniques. Now if you're wondering, wait, can I drop down to World Tier 1? and then get to 10, but then go up to world tier 3 and then get my reward and it'll be better. No, every single world tier has its own uh, tree of whispers going on and its own uh, 10 grim offerings to be filled. You see here I have a different amount of grim favors depending on which world tier I actually switch to, so sadly we can't game the system like that. And as an aside, if the world boss is ever up, you may as well go do it as it will always count for 5 grim favors as well as give you, you know, the awesome world boss drops, which are very much worth getting your hands on as often as possible. All of that said then, well, how are these rewards actually shaping up? Well, when you get your 10 Grim Favors, you will get a quest to go back to the tree, and then you will be offered a choice of three different caches. They will be random. They will be both random in terms of what kind of cache it is, and the quality of it. You can get caches on, like, chest pieces, weapons, jewelry, etc., and then there's also chaos caches, which could be literally anything. But that said, let's say you choose a chest piece focused cache, you could still get like gloves or legs in there, but you will at least get one chest piece as that's its goal. But you can also get extras like gold and crafting materials, but perhaps the most important extra here, and in fact what I would say is the most useful thing the Tree of Whispers does, especially once you get in a good state character power and gear wise, is drop the Nightmare Dungeon sigils to uh, unlock them and let you start working working on them. These become the best way to level up as fast as possible when you no longer care about anything other than just pure XP per time, and this is going to give you access to a whole lot of them to do whenever you open the cache, at least on Tier 3 Nightmare it will. And it can also drop glyphs, which are obviously key for your Paragon board if you don't yet have a key one to slot in that supports your build, and this is a great way to actually get a hold of them, as they're otherwise quite annoying to do so, at least at this stage of the game. So you could also then get offered a legendary cache, and this works the same as the not ones, what they're focused on, the only difference is it will guarantee you at least one legendary. And of course, if one of those options is orange, always choose it. You will just get infinitely better rewards than a normal white text cache, even if you would rather have the piece that the white is focusing on, the legendary is just that much more valuable. If you are on a World Tier 3, you can get Sacreds and Uniques out of this too, so it's obviously very, very useful to uh, patching up holes in your build, certain legendary effects that you might not have, and generally just an easy way to get a complete set online that you can do harder activities with. And for turning in and grabbing the cash too, you will get a huge chunk of experience, which will go a long way to, yeah, getting you to 50 and beyond, and uh, powering through the Paragon board. It really is a neat little system, and it's easy to kind of equate it to, like, daily quests in an MMO, except, you know, you can do them all the time, and they feed into everything else going on in Diablo. Essentially, then, the best way to progress your character from the levels of sort of 45 to 55 
in a general sense on World Tier 3 is to just do two Whispers Dungeons, get the reward, two Whispers Dungeons, get the reward. It will level you up fairly quickly, it will get you renown as you go around the map chasing them down, and that results in, of course, more skill points, eventually more Paragon points, grab the lift statues on the way to start farming them up, and it will also get you repeated caches, which will shower you in legendaries, nightmare dungeon unlockers, and all of the resources you could need. It essentially is the jack of all trades of helping you progress in the game, even if it's not specifically the best at any given one target you might have. It really is just the best general, I kinda just wanna progress in this game, uh, that you can have. Especially, and very deliberately, post-campaign up until unlocking World Tier 3. It is the best way to do that, and it is the best way to be in a powerful enough position to do that as soon as possible. So if you are listening to this, watching this, you've beat the campaign, but you have not beat the capstone dungeon to unlock World Tier 3 Nightmare yet, just chain Tree of Whispers dungeons, and you will get there in no time. I hope then this has proven useful. There is admittedly not a lot of subtleties to uh, this system, but it is very much good at what it's here for, and effective if you use it correctly. For now then, like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more, consider supporting the Futures channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice, to reiterate that it is nice, to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye